Hey, it's Mike. Thanks for tuning back in. Today I'm going to bring you the story of the history of the Cabbage Patch Kids, <laughs> the Garbage Pail Kids, uh, which I bought this one a few weeks ago and I've been talking about producing this video for a few weeks. Today's the day. It's a long Memorial Day weekend, so I've got plenty of time. And uh, so let's get started. In 1966, of course, Tops has been around for forever, since the 1930s, I think. In 1966, they were producing Batman cards, and one of their artists who was drawing them decided, just for fun, he would draw Batman sitting on a toilet thinking. It was never supposed to get seen by anybody, but of course, nowadays, you can still see it. It's on the internet. Uh, and that was kind of the first uh, foray of Tops into kind of subversive humor. The next year, 1967, they produced Wacky Packages, which simply changed product names, basically. So instead of Ritz crackers, you had Rats crackers. Instead of Morton salt, you had Moron salt. They were very popular with kids and immature adults, inevitably. They decided to bring back Wacky Packages in 1984, and this was right after the popularity of uh, Cabbage Patch Kids. In November 1983, there were literal riots in toy stores over Cabbage Patch Kids, parents wanting to get the most popular toy in the world for their kids ahead of Christmas. And there were actual fights in stores. There were lines that were ran out of stock. I remember going into a Toys R Us in South Portland, Maine at that time because my sister really wanted. My sister was seven at that time and she really wanted a Cabbage Patch Kid. And we waited in a very long line and they were out. Uh, I wasn't a fan of them at the time, but eventually I had a Cabbage Patch Kids birthday party here I am in the middle with my Care Bears cake, and my friends had to bring all their favorite Cabbage Patch Kids. Um, it's That was probably 1986 or 87. So after the popularity of Cabbage Patch Kids, Topps creative consultant Mark Newgarden suggested parodying Cabbage Patch Kids. Uh, at the time, Topps CEO Arthur Shoren was trying to negotiate in a licensing agreement with Cabbage Patch Kids owner Original Appalachian Artworks for trading cards. And the owner of that company, OAA, said that trading cards were too lowbrow for him. So Topps CEO decided he would make them as lowbrow as possible. The creative consultant Newgarden had Topps artist Jeff Pound, John Pound, draw a little baby bum in a trash can. And while that card never got released, you can see the artwork now uh, it very clearly is parodying Cabbage Patch Kids. Uh, Art Spiegelman, who also was working on his graphic novel Mouse, which became wildly popular and eventually banned in some places. Uh, the, the graphic novel was about his father's Holocaust experiences. Spiegelman came up with the naming system of pun and rhyme-heavy names um, and, and also gross that would fit the cards very well. He knew that these pun and rhyme-heavy names would be popular with kids. Uh, John Pound illustrated all 44 of the first series in two months. Spiegelman, as his editor, consistently gave him the advice to make them grosser. There were three, at least, that were unpublished at the time. One of them was a baby in a pickle jar, unpublished because it looked like an abandoned fetus. Uh, they also had Abe Lincoln with bullet holes in his top hat, sitting in a theater. Those were eventually released in 2010, though. In that first set, they decided to release two different names on each card. So, for instance, this Atom Bomb was also released with the same artwork as Blasted Billy. They wanted two different kids to get insulted by the same artwork, apparently. So the first series was released in June of 1985. Each pack sold for 25 cents. They were wildly popular. Stores reported having lines way out the door, receiving dozens of calls every day asking if they had any in stock. They uh, were kind of like Mad Magazine in terms of, you know, that subversive humor and popular with counterculture kids. I was a subscriber to Mad Magazine and Cracked Magazine, not that early, but probably the late 80s into the mid 90s. This came at a time when things that were smelly and ugly and gross were really popular with kids. The New York Times even did an article in uh, 1986 about this trend. Uh, where kids talked about they just want them to be they want their toys to be ugly and smelly and gross It's really an interesting time in American history. I remember I had uh, a he-man um, 
figure, stink man or stink or skunk man, something like that, that smelled really bad. And I loved it. it. You know, you just want to show your friends, look at, smell this, smell this. Because it was so popular, Topps had to bring on more and more artists, several more artists to meet demand. They brought on Andy Warhol's nephew. Um, they also invited freelancers in at $50, $50 per day to come up with ideas like Haley's Vomit. <laughs> Kids loved these cards. Parents did not. More importantly, OAA did not. OAA, of course, the owners of Cabbage Patch Kids. They filed a $30 million lawsuit against Topps in 1986. Topps was scared. They feared a big judgment against them. They had actual editing notes that if they went to court, these editing notes were um, damning. They said things like, make them look more like Cabbage Patch Kids. So Topps decided to settle with OAA, giving them royalties of future sales and a lump sum payment for past sales. They also agreed to change the design of the dolls on their cards so that they didn't look like Cabbage Patch Kids, so they looked more like the hard, uh, hard plastic dolls of the time. In 1986, the Chicago Tribune published a couple of articles about bullying of kids via Garbage Pail Kids. There was one kid who uh, students in his class were leaving notes, uh, leaving Garbage Pail Kids saying, most unpopular student on his desk. So yeah, I can see why that might be unpopular in schools and with parents. The fears of that bullying grew along with what, the, what they called a bloodlust for the violence depicted in the cards. Schools started banning Garbage Pail Kids uh, and of course, this created a lot of news around them and a lot more popularity. Kids really wanted them, but because of this news, parents didn't want kids to have them. Uh, schools were banning them because the cards had things like cheater's license on the back. And this says, this license entitles you to bring binoculars to school during midterm exams. You may sneak into a movie theater by walking in backwards when the, sh when the show breaks and pay half fare on a bus by walking in on your knees. Now, nobody would think that this is real, of course, but some kids might try it as a joke, and that created problems, maybe. I'm not sure. A group called Parents Against Sad Sadistic Toys successfully lobbied toy stores to stop selling Garbage Pail Kids, and then even Jacques Cousteau got in on the fight, saying that Garbage Pail Kids could lead kids to try cocaine. It's just so funny. Then Topps decided to sign a deal to produce a live action movie, thinking that it would be cute and kids would love it and even parents would love it, but it ended up becoming one of the worst, most off-putting movies in the history of movies when this, the story was an antiques dealer who needs to keep disgusting mutant children hidden from society. And of course, in the movie, the kids get out and they spray snot and vomit everywhere. Sounds like a blast to me, but it was not popular. It only made $661,000 on opening weekend and only $1.6 million total. Complete bomb, even though it had a very small profit because it only cost a million dollars to make. It was a huge disappointment for Tops. CBS was producing a Garbage Pail Kids animated series around that same time, but because of all of the controversy and the failure of the movie, they had 13 episodes made, and they never released them. Watchdog groups got to them too, so that was a big part of it. So ultimately, 800 million cards were sold, but that fad came to an end very quickly. In 1988, the, they were less popular. Kids preferred the old appearance before the settlement, where Tops had to change the appearance of the cards. They had 15 sets released up till that point. They had a 16th set ready to go. They just didn't release it. The uncut sheet was found behind the car, behind the Topps factory, and um, just never released. In 2003, 15 years later, Topps brought it back with some of the original artists, and they've continued producing them since. I sometimes see them at Target still. Uh, they had a Joe Chaotic uh, Garbage Pail Kid based on Joe Exotic back in 2020. There's, I don't know if they're popular still. I don't know if people are buying them. I would never buy the new ones, I don't really understand why you would have them nowadays, but hey, if Topps is producing them and making money, good for them. I think about 
the 80s a lot. I was a kid of the 80s and the early 90s, and I have a coworker who was is the uh, like six months older than me maybe, and we talk a lot about nostalgia. And I also talked to my son about nostalgia. My son's 19, and he doesn't have a lot of like shared nostalgia with his kids his age because there was so much media in the last 10 years, 15 years, that kids just weren't watching the same things, unless it's like SpongeBob maybe. But when we were, when I was a kid in the 80s, everybody watched the same TV shows, everybody watched the same movies, everybody listened to the same music because there wasn't a ton of it produced. But nowadays, there it's everywhere. There's millions of things that you could be watching or listening to. And I think the 80s and 90s were really the last era where nostalgia is going to rule, where you can share that nostalgia with new people you meet, old friends. You can. I get together with friends and we talk about things that happened 30, 40 years ago, things we watched, things we did that just isn't the same anymore. So what do you think about Garbage Pail Kids? Did you love them? Did you have them? I remember giving my last, my I think I had the second series. I gave them to my friend, Ethan, who's actually in this birthday party picture next to me. He had the first series and I gave him my second series in a binder because I just, I was more into baseball cards. So that's all. Thanks very much. I hope you guys have a great Memorial Day.